Okay, now we are connected and with this button we should be able to turn on our vipers. So now basically we created our own bidirectional scanner which is very cool. Okay, so today we will be doing something different than just generic OBD2 scanners. So here I have the CANBUS data logging cable. This cable is from CSS Electronics. I will also put link in description to their website. Those guys are professional for this CANBUS stuff. I am just new in this, so don't expect some top tier technical advice. We will be kind of discovering together, but what this thing does, it logs raw CANBUS communication. So in car you have different control modules, like instrument cluster module, radio module, body control module, engine module, and those modules in most modern cars communicate in CANBUS communication. So first we will connect this to car, I will show you how this communication looks, and then we will also try to extract some of this data and possibly make our own custom OBD2 application, and we will be sending also commands to our car. So one more time, thank you very much for sponsoring CSS Electronics. They sent me this cable for free. They have different cables, different loggers. If you have any question, don't be afraid to email them, ask them and they will advise you. But now let's plug it into our OBD port. Second end to laptop. And we will be using this Savican software. Now this software is free. It is open source. You can download it. And the CSS Electronics, they have own version. So if you buy cable from CSS Electronics, make sure to download Savican from their website. Okay, first we have to open connection. Open connection window. Add new device connection. Our cable is this QT serial device. And when I create connection, we should already see some canvas messages. So create connection. Yeah, and we already can see data. I can do this auto scroll window so we can see new messages popping up. And also it is good idea to use this override mode so it will not display inactive parts of communication. So this is how the canvas messaging look like. This is one canvas message containing eight different bytes. And check this out when I turn ignition on we will see a lot more messages. Now there are a lot of options you can do with this software. I haven't even gone over all of them. But for example, here you could save your log file. So everything is being logged and you can save this file. Later you can use it to reverse engineer something. But this program also has some reverse engineering options. For example, I like to use this sniffer. And now this will show me everything that is changing. If the value goes up, it will be in green color. If value goes down, it will be in red color. Now I'm not doing anything, but we already have a lot of these bytes changing. So for now, let's turn off ignition. So we have least data possible. Now it will remove inactive bytes. Now let's try something. For example, my hazard lights to see some change. See now these three values are representing hazard lights. Turn them off. Or we can try one turn signal, but for that I have to again turn ignition on. Now if you are trying to search for something with ignition on and you have a lot of this data, you can also do this notch. And this will kind of mute some of the messages, so it is easier to find out where is change happening. So now let's try left turn signal. See, here is the change for turn signal. Turn it off. Okay, so let's try to figure out something. Let's say windshield wiper. Let me turn it on and we will check where is the change. Check this out. Is this exact byte? It will change to C0 when I turn on wipers. One more time. C, C0. When it's wiping, it's C0. If I turn it off, it will go to 0, 0. C0 and byte ID is 0, 0, 35D. Let's remember that. Now we can try to create log file and then play it back. So what we will do, let me go, let me close this sniffer. I will clear frames. 
and when I clear frames, I will briefly turn on wipers and then stop capturing and we will create log file. So clear frames, turn on wiper. Suspend capturing and we can create log file. Save log file, let's do test vipers. And now using this Savikan you can also play back these commands. So we can go to this send frames, playback, load file. This is test vipers. And now we could send all the data, but let's deselect IDs. And if I remember correctly, change was only on this 35D. So let's play only this to see what happens. Okay, let me hit play. <laughs> and we successfully send that command to my car. It is still playing frames. So we successfully create our first hack, let's call it. <laughs> also remember that you don't have to have laptop to log this data. So even if I connect without laptop, like this, now it is in logging mode. So when I will drive, it will be logging data. And then if you want to check those data, what you have to do, you need to be disconnected from OBD, only connect cable. I will clear this because we are not longer connected. But now when we are not connected, it opened automatically. These are all the log files stored inside my cable. For example, this is the last one. And this is how the log file looks like. See, we have a bunch of messages here. And what you can do with this log file, you don't have to be connected to your car. So if you go to Savican, you can load this log file, this same log file, and you can load it inside your Savican. See, so now there is not active communication, but this is old log file. And you can still use reverse engineering tool, but now we will not use sniffer, we will use this flow view. See, this is full file. Here you can choose one ID. For example, we know this 35D has something to do with our front vipers. And here you can play your log file. See, and here you can see those changes. So this is graph apparently for running my windshield vipers. And you can choose any ID. So you can look separately at every ID, hit this playback and you will see all the changes. So using this, you can kind of start figuring out which ID is for which function in car and you don't even have to be connected. You can just use your old log files, but it is easier when you are connected because then you can kind of test it out and see response in real time. But right now what I want to do, we have log file for turning on our windshield vipers. And I am curious if we could build our own app with this data. And we will not use this cable, we will use ELM327 adapter, I will use OBD Link MX Plus. And even though I cannot code myself, now we have ChatGBT, so I will try it using ChatGBT. I uploaded my data log to ChatGBT and it helped me to create this one command. This exact command should be responsible for turning on windshield wiper. Now I have my canvas cable disconnected. And I only have this ELM adapter, which we will use to send this command to our car. So open CMD, paste command, hit enter. First it will do a couple of checks and then it should turn on my windshield wiper. <laughs> Perfect, it's working. Okay, check this out. Using ChatGBT, by the way, all the work for this app was done by ChatGBT. I don't know how to code, so don't worry about that. ChatGBT will help you. But let's try this. So with this app, we should be able to control these vipers. So first we have to open communication. Okay, now we are connected. And with this button, vibe once, we should be able to turn on our vipers. So now basically we created our own bidirectional scanner, which is very cool. But I would also like to add a couple of things. So I will try to add windshield washer and also the rear wiper. Okay, so now I connected back my Cambus cable. And what I will do right now, I will make two data logs. One for windshield washer and wiper and second for the rear wiper. And then we will give it to ChatGBT and hopefully we can add it to our new app. Okay, first let me hit this suspend capturing. 
clear frames and when I enable capturing again I will briefly turn on the windshield wiper. Ok, restart capturing. Suspend. Save log file. So this we can call windshield washer. And now second log we will do for the rear wiper. So restart capturing. Turn it on. Turn off. Suspend capturing. And save log file. Rear wiper. And now I will send these new files to ChatGBT and hopefully he can make those new features functional. Okay, so now Chat did the code for the new app. So this should include the front windshield wipers, uh, front windshield washer and the rear wiper. Check this out and this is how simple it is with Chat. Even if you don't know how to code, I don't understand any of this also. But you just copy code, you paste this into notepad, save as. Here we already have recommended name from chat, so let's stick with this one. Just don't forget to change it from text document to all files so it can work. Now back to the CMD. By the way, if you don't know how to open this CMD window, just press this window key and R. And here you either see CMD or you can just type in CMD. Hit enter. This is our CMD window. And this is our new app. Okay, so one more time, let's connect. Open communication. Oh wait, I forget to insert OBD link. Okay, one more time, open. So first let's try this vibe once, if the app still works. Okay, app is working. Perfect. Let's try washer. Okay, so this just wipes windshield again. How about the rear wiper? Will it work? This doesn't work. Let's try test number two. But it doesn't work as well. Maybe we can try this custom sender. Wait, so now it should be set to front wiper. Yeah. Okay, I tried a couple more times with ChatGBT, but I wasn't successful to run my windshield washer or rear wiper. I also see that ChatGBT has kind of trouble separating these exact bytes. So if you give him full log, it is very hard for him to separate exact command to give you, for example, like for this windshield washer. But if you are using sniffer and you find out where is the change happening, then it is easier for ChatGBT to help you craft command. For example, I found one old log from trying out my hazard lights and in this new app created by Chat, this is command loop count five times. Let me hit run sequence. See, this works. And also the front wipers. Using sniffer, I found out exactly where is the change happening and then I told to Chat so to create more features, obviously the better way is to find out where exactly is change happening and then give chat more details. But testing this tool was really fun. If you want to do the same, go to CSS Electronics website. I will link it in the description. Choose one of the cables. You can message them and they will advise you which one will be best for you, depending on what you are trying to do. Just email them and they will give you good advice. And when I will have some free time to do some more experimenting, I will make some new videos about this because this is definitely very interesting.